Hey, thank you for joining me at the Open Word Bible Study. This is the study that takes us inside and behind the original languages the Bible was written in. And currently, we are in what is called the Honey Edition of Open Word, basically where I'm taking some of the studies I've had in my own time early in the mornings with the Lord and sharing some of what I found as far as the words I was opening in those times. I hope that as we go with this, this honey edition, that you really are experiencing the sweetness of God's word. Well, today's title is after the word that we're going to be opening, as is usual, and that word happens to be waver. This word happens to have a negative connection with what we were looking at in our last study, and that last study was with the word responsiveness, the idea of having a soft heart towards the Lord, a soft heart in which obeys the Lord, follows him. And so the question we're going to be asking today is what happens when our hearts are not soft towards the Lord and his word? And yet, at the same time, not completely hardened towards the Lord either. Really, what happens when we walk the fence line between following him and following other things? We're going to find at least part of this answer in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. This passage takes us to a scene at the top of Mount Carmel where the prophet Elijah has joining him there at the top of the mountain, both prophets of Baal and Asherah, those two false gods. The Israelites, the people are also there at the mountain to see what's going to happen with this showdown between the God of Israel and the God of, well, Baal and Asherah, the, the God of the other uh, countries around, the nations that were around. And what happens is it starts with the prophets of Baal and Asherah. They're calling upon their gods to send fire down onto the altar that's before them. And they do this through much of the day with nothing happening. No one answers because they're calling to false gods, lowercase g gods. But then when it's Elijah's turn, he calls upon the Lord, the true living God. And of course, he responds by sending fire down that licks up the water that Elijah had poured around the altar and on top of the altar just to show that God is able to send fire down. Um, nothing can stop him from bringing fire that would light up that sacrifice. So it licks up all of that water and that same fire burns the sacrifice as well as even the altar itself. And then remember, all of Israel is watching this happen. And it's after this intense scene that we come into our main text, 1 Kings 18, 21. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Elijah the prophet was calling out the Israelites for their wavering between who do we follow? Uh, the Lord, Yahweh, or Baal? Interestingly, the Hebrew word that waver is translated from is from right to left, Pesach. And what's interesting about the word being Pesach is that that is the word translated as Passover. And you'll find that especially in the book of Exodus where it's talking about the Passover event. Today we get to see this same word Pesach used in a different way. Uh, Pesach can mean to leap or to dance, and we could especially see that definition, that meaning in line with Passover, you know, leaping over something. However, Pesach can also be translated as becoming limp or disabled. Though wavering could be the picture of leaping back and forth between two opinions, there's an even more graphic picture that develops of the Israelites wavering and the effect that it has on them when we look at the other meanings of Pesach, those two lower meanings, a limp or being disabled. 
which by the way is exactly what we see reflected in other translations of this same verse so for example outside of the new international version which is where we just read that passage from we can also see the king james version says it this way how long halt ye between two opinions and i want us to see that word halt i'll come back to that in a moment the English Standard Version says, how long will you go limping between two different opinions? We can see that in both of these translations, the word Pesach is translated in the context of limping and or being disabled. And as I mentioned with the King James Version, it uses the word halt. Being disabled can cause this halting action to just stop, at least in certain areas. I want for us to see the Hebrew word Pesach operating in the same context with halting, with being disabled or, or limping in that very specific way. And so we're going to look at it in another verse that specifically translates Pesach as disabled that verse is in second samuel chapter 4 and it is verse 4 it says now jonathan saul's son had a son who was disabled in both feet he was five years old when the news of saul and jonathan came from jezreel and that was that they had been defeated in battle they had been killed and his nurse picked him up and fled. But it happened that in her hurry to flee, he fell and could no longer walk. And his name was Mephibosheth. Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, was disabled, as this verse tells us. Of course, that comes from our Hebrew word for today, Pesach. Being disabled in his feet made it so that he could not walk. His feet were limp. So we're gaining this picture of how the word Pesach can be used in the way that I believe it's intended to be translated over in our main text, 1 Kings 18, verse 21. So taking this concept back into our main text, when instead of fully fearing God and having our hearts soften to him to obeying and following his word completely, then we direct that fear or that obedience towards the things of the world, making them gods in our lives instead of the true living God. This can place us one foot in with the Lord and one foot in with the world, whatever, whatever area of the world that might be. But listen, th that doesn't work. You can't have one foot in with the Lord and one foot in the world. You can't be on the fence and actually have a, a direction that really works out in life going about it that way. It's as the prophet Elijah spoke to the Israelites at the top of Mount Carmel that day. That is wavering between two opinions. And, and the whole point is you've got to choose. Which is it going to be? Are you going to just keep going the way of the world? Or are you going to completely trust the Lord? So what a picture of wavering then, being in the state of limpness or being disabled really presents. Because wavering keeps us stuck on that fence. It keeps us from being able to move forward and to experience the freedom that comes from walking with the Lord in all of his goodness. And this idea of walking with the Lord, this picture is furthered when we look again at the closing words of what Elijah spoke to the Israelites in verse 21. He said, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. The Hebrew word that's being used for this word follow used twice there at the end of the verse. In Hebrew, from right to left, that word is halak. And what it means rhymes with that. And it is to walk, literally to walk. If you are wavering, then you are not walking with the Lord. You are not following him. It's impossible to really walk forward with him if you're wavering. If you're just like, I don't know if I'm really going to obey the Lord completely. In my journal entry from the morning in which I studied these same words, I wrote this. If the people, Israel, were to continue the way they were, 
they would be dragging themselves along at best, really going nowhere. And this is especially true if you're at the top of a fence. I mean, picture that. Being at the top of a fence, it would be hard to limp along. It would be hard just to walk without any disabled feet along the top of a fence line. So if you are in that position, you're walking the fence between fully following the Lord and following something or someone else, maybe even self, then look to the living God. Look to the Lord and choose to follow him completely. And you're going to experience a new way of walking. You're going to experience a new kind of freedom. You will, instead of being disabled and limp, you will be able to really move forward. You'll experience a different kind of living. May we grow in wavering no more, but having a steadfast walk with the Lord day in and day out. No more of being disabled in our walk with the Lord. Choose to follow him completely. Let's pray about this together. Lord, we do thank you for this picture that we have from what Elijah spoke to the Israelites up at the top of Mount Carmel. We thank you, Lord, that as we dig deeper into the Hebrew, we're able to see very much that picture of what happens when we waver, when we choose to walk the fence and not fully obey you. It's disabling to our lives, Lord. It's, it's disabling to really having a clear-cut direction and a meaningful and purposeful life because all of that is found in you. So, Lord, help us in any of our wavering. Help us to uh, get down from the fence <laughs> And, and to follow you completely. And we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Next Thursday, that's March 17th, we're going to open up another word in the Honey edition of the Open Word Bible Study. I'm looking forward to doing that with you. Until then, Shalom in Christ.